and welcome back to Becky's allotment. Today we're on the second plot uh, by the grapevine which you can see behind me with these little net things over the grapes. Now what usually happens is in September the wasps come along and they eat all the grapes so I haven't tried them before so I got these covers for them but this year they haven't eaten the grapes so I don't know where the wasps are. There's no wasps. It's not normal. Maybe it was too hot. I don't know. Let's have a look at the grapes. So these are seeded grapes and they're a variety called Black Hamburg, I think. Someone told me they were. This they're, they're really nice, sweet, but the um the seeds are annoying. So although I've been eating them, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, maybe make something with them. But these little nets have kept the bugs off. Looks like the they need all picking now. And uh got some these were supposed to be red grapes but they're green and they seem to have some sort of rot if anyone can tell me what's wrong with these grapes they're supposed to be red they've stayed green they look to be ripe and they taste nice some of them just rotty so look see if I got any out of the like a soot or something. I don't know what's wrong with them, but yeah, they're not good. But um, that's it for the grapevine. Underneath we got the uh, blueberries. Oh, nearly fell over. So we've got the blueberries there, which I think can come out of these pots now. These ones did something really weird, where they just dried up to nothing. And the plant looked dead and all the leaves fell off, so I don't know whether those are dead now. Possibly. But I've got some more. So this is the rest of plot two. It's um, looking alright. Got some apple trees there. They were infected with, uh, not infected, infested with moth this year and I didn't anything up so we lost all the apples we also lost all the plums on this tree which I've cut back rather harshly because it was we're not allowed anything over six foot and it was definitely over that and it looks like I've missed some crossing branches which is not like me but I think I was in a rush to get rid so these are some blackberries that have come over from next door's plot which I'm going to remove and put somewhere else but they're thornless ones and they're very nice and we've got another plum tree behind and a pear tree I think I'm going to have to cover these gooseberries and red currants and black currants and stuff because they just seem to disappear and that is the um, elderflower or elderberry tree which needs trimming again it doesn't stop growing it's so quick and then I think I've got to cut these down as well I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it it's like a mass of tree and thorns this should be fun might have to buy something when I can afford it to cut that back but yeah so we had the I can't codlin moth is it on this plot so we didn't get although there was lots of fruit it was all useless which was getting so well, that's this little half lot. So let's go over now to my new plot, which is just over here. So this is the new plot. When we took this on, the greenhouse had 
glass missing or broken we couldn't afford new glass so we went to the shop and got some perspex which seems to be working really well we had to measure it and cut it out but most of the greenhouse is still glass but some of it is perspex I think I did these middle pieces as perspex the roof is all glass so this was like covered literally about that high in mare's tail so we had to take all the slabs up which were already there and um, put them back down with some plastic underneath so that seems to have solved the mare's tail problem there so this is my new greenhouse thankfully because I lost the other one I still miss that greenhouse I loved it but there we go it's, these things happen and um, I need to buy some kerosene is it for this lamp thing that we inherited here so uh, anyone's got any good ideas of where I can buy that let me know there's some shallots which I'm going to plant next year and I got some garlic to go in as well which I haven't done so obviously this plot isn't finished yet I think these are three cornered leeks and I think they start to come up now and then flower in the spring I'm not sure but we'll see so then we've got this coal frame thing I mean it is heavy the glass on that literally some of the glass came down off that roof in the winter smashed on there there's not even a dent or a scratch on it it's so thick so hopefully that'll be useful in the spring to harden off some plants and storing some pots in there at the moment and just trying to sort everything out then we have a big load of bonfire stuff so my plot is only small it's only a half plot this so where these bits of yellow hose pipe are that's where my plot ends so it's not looking the best at the moment but I'm going to try and get it done through the winter now so we've got some raised beds made there with some old decking which are painted black and um, we dug up all the raspberry canes and uh, yeah everything's pretty much ready that's going to be burnt in November so we're going to wait until the 5th to burn that lot and hopefully we're going to get some more decking or some more wood and make a few more raised beds to fill this up and then when we get some wood chips we'll make some paths as well but there's not much that can be done until we get the wood and we can burn that so that we can cover this bit in the black plastic dig it over and get some raised beds on it and a path so I think I'm gonna dedicate maybe a foot or two foot to a little path that'll come down here because my plot is the bigger one so probably should have the path on it but then that'll be my responsibility to wood chip it and everything because that's that's someone else's plot and then this is someone else's plot again but that's it for this plot really it was a terrible mess when we took it on but it's much better now I need to sort some guttering out to um, get these filled and I've got a black currant it's always full of black currants Grisby, and there's some raspberry still dotted in there and there's still some rotty pears on there so I left them but this was so full of pears and they were all lovely I don't know what sort of pear it is though definitely not a conference pear but I don't know what type it is but it is really lovely and these raspberries they just seem to be popping up because the whole plot was practically just raspberry canes and um these are the autumn fruiting ones I would think 
And there's a blueberry there as well, but didn't get much off that this year. And there was a hazel, I think that's it. And I don't want it, but every time I cut it down to the ground, it keeps coming back. Uh, that's it for this block. Still a work in progress. To see in, and the plot on my intro. Um, it's looking a bit weedy at the moment, just because I haven't had time to do much with it. And uh, everything's coming to an end now. You'll see the black plastic on the left hand side. Uh, that's just because there was so much um, cooked grass on there that I absolutely couldn't cope with it. So I had to dig everything out that I could and put the black plastic down. So I couldn't manage. We've dug over the right hand side at the front about five or six times this year. It's just crazy. So as you can see here on the left by the net tunnel, there's um, chard and um, kale and other brassicas that I've got. I think there's some spinach there, perpetual spinach. Some more kale in there with the leeks and um, I think there's a few garlic in there. Some more garlic and onions dotted about the place. There's the peach tree that needs to go back into the poly tunnel now. That's been out in the sun because I thought I lost it through the winter because it didn't seem to be alive. And the beans are coming to an end now, so I think I've just got to pick some and uh, pull the canes down now. And then we've got the poly tunnel there. Two tomatoes left in the poly tunnel. They're ripening up okay at the moment, so I'll keep them going for as long as they're alive. Um, there wasn't too many because I started them late this year, so we've had a couple of Shirley's and things at uh, Gardener's Delight. They've been nice. This used to be on plot one, and um, you can see it's a bit weedy, but there are some red and brown onions in there. Uh, it looks like some of the strawberry runners have gone in there as well. Um, there's some pots of blueberries because I bought some the other year and they were in there as well. Um, there's a cabbage I think and a kale that I planted earlier this year and there's some two of the new ones that I put in last week. Um, so they're doing alright. And there's my strawberries and some more onions because I planted all my onions for this year and then this was a bed of I think there was a cabbage, cauliflower, some spinach and three kale plants in there but there's literally nothing left so I don't know what's happened to them there's just this leaf now that was from the cabbage that I put there because that was in the middle at the front. But I don't know. I don't know where they've gone. I don't know whether someone's taken them, a bird has taken them. I, I just don't know. I think there's some garlic and a spare kale in there. It was just really weird that one plant, all the other plants that I planted in various other beds are still there, but that one, there's nothing. None of the plants. It's really, really strange, so, oh well, what can you do? There's nothing you can do. So that's annoyed me a little. Let's go dig around, see if I can find any roots and uh, see what's happening. So I know I put slug pellets down, you can see them there in the ground, so it can't be slugs have eaten all of them. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be wet enough that they've rotted out. Do you think birds could have taken them? Would they, would they have only taken them from that bed? I just don't... If anyone's got any ideas what has happened to all my brassicas out of this bed, and they were all different ones, so it was black kale, curly kale, and some cauliflower, cabbage, and perpetual spinach, so... Can anyone, I can't see any roots. It, I mean, I, I did have some stuff in here before, but I don't know, I don't know where they've gone. It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. I can't 
can't help being a little annoyed. I mean, it's not like I grew them from seed and the seed was cheap. I bought the plants and planted them. They were big, big plants. Anyway, enough about the missing brassicas. Let's plant my new rhubarb plant. So I really wanted a sweeter one, so I thought I'd try this one called Raspberry Red. So we'll see how that does. Uh, so it says you can plant it in full sun or partial shade. And let's have a look how it does. I think this is a plant rather than a crown. So I'm just going to plant this and it's probably going to take a year or two before I get anything off it. But I've got some other rhubarb in the meantime. But I've already dug a hole and weeded that well. But I've dug it. So I got this off a company on eBay and they're really good and they offer some really nice plants on there. So um, there's a nice root ball on this. I'm going to plant it the same depth. I don't want it any deeper. And uh, I'm just going to fill that in. It's really difficult to uh, plant it one-handed while you're trying to film it on the camera, but here we go. <laughs> So there we go. Nice bit of soil. I'm getting some manure hopefully later this month, so I'll put a little bit of that around it once I get it. But the soil's pretty good here, so hopefully it'll do quite well. It's in full sun there. So that's all firmed in now. All that's left to do is give it a quick water. So the ground is quite wet because we had torrential rain the other day so I don't want to give it too much water but just enough so I put a plant label in and hopefully that shouldn't disappear anywhere so thanks for watching